Hey, bro. Yeah, what's up? What are we What are we doing here? I don't know, man. You know how it is. Yeah, I guess you're right. Hey, bud. You ever wonder how much sand it takes to stop a bullet? How much dirt? Like, are we safe sitting here? Oh man, I don't know. Let's find out together. Welcome back to Slightly Less Tactical. My name is Nathan. Today we're going to see how much sand it takes to stop some bullets. We got our sand set up over here, set up for about 20 inches of sand. I figure that should be enough to stop it. We got a variety of guns. So let me get loaded up and we'll get started with our 22. All right, I got the 22 loaded up and this Marlin 22. It was actually my first gun I ever got when I was a kid. So let's take the shot, see what happens. Center hit, whip it safe. Let's go check it out. There's our hit. Disturb a little bit of the dirt. I'm gonna dig this out and I'll find it and I'll show you. Give me a second. All right, I found the 22 round and went through about four inches of dirt before it stopped. As usual, it mushroomed out just fine. Just a lead bullet. So next up, we're gonna shoot a nine millimeter out of a Glock 19 Gen 5. So let me get that loaded and we'll get started. All right, we're back. Two rounds we're gonna shoot is just a regular full metal jacket nine millimeter. And we're gonna shoot a Hornaday critical defense round. We're gonna shoot the Full metal jacket first, and then the critical defense round. See what happens. All right, here we go. All right, I'm gonna find that full metal jacket first, and then I'll show you, and then we'll shoot the next one. All right, I found the nine mil. It's not deformed at all. Went through about eight inches of sand before it stopped. Just got a little bit of scratch marks. So we'll get started with the critical defense round by Horner to have the Glock Gen 5. All right, here we go. Grab my ears. Give me a second. There we go. Now we're cooking. All right. As usual, let me find it and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, I found that uh, critical defense round. Massive expansions, just like it's designed to do. Went to about twice the size of a regular nine millimeter. So next we're gonna shoot a 40 cal full metal jacket. Let me get that loaded up and we'll start it. All right, got the 40 cal ready. We're gonna be shooting full metal jackets, 40 Smith & Wesson rounds out of this Taurus Millennium. Put my air pro down, we'll take the shot. All right, let me go see what happened and I'll show you. All right, I found the 40 cal round, not much deformation in it, same kind of usual thing. The flat nose kind of dented in, scratched the heck out of it. Next up, we're gonna shoot a 44 Magnum, see what happens. Let me load that and we'll get started. So I might have forgot to mention that that Hornaday critical defense round out of the nine mil went through about six inches of sand before it stopped. And the 40 cal went through about seven and a half inches. So next up is the 44 mag. This is a 230 grain hard cast lead. Here we go. Solid hit. All right. Pistol is clear. That definitely moves some sand. So let's go see how big the crater is. You see it hit there and it just cleaned this whole side out. So let me see if I can find this round and I will show it to you. I think it broke up. There's a piece of lead. So I'm just gonna say it completely broke up and shattered and went everywhere. So I'll see if there's a main part and I'll get back with you. All right, I found the biggest part of that slug. 
it's probably about three quarters of it and a nice big chunk off the side of it so that's all we have for pistol rounds so we're gonna start on rifle well, first up we're gonna start with a 223 so let me grab that and we'll get started all right got the 223 loaded up we're just shooting full metal jackets 55 grain out of this ar-15 so let's go ahead and take the shot okay let's clear this and i'll go find that bullet and i'll get back with you all right i found that 223 well the jacket of it is about three and a half inches deep before it shredded itself and came to a stop so next up we're gonna see what happens with the 762 by 39 out of an ak-47 this ak-47 perhaps all right Hope it's a good hit, we're only three feet away. Let me go see if I can find it. I'll show you. All right, so I found the 762, well, what's left of it? Did the exact same thing, just shredded itself, came apart, the lead just destroyed itself, and found the jacket at about five inches. So next up, we're gonna shoot a 308. Just 165 grain lead tip bullet. Put my ear pro on and we'll get the shot done. This is out of a uh, Remington 700 308. Here we go. Just as I expected, pushed a lot of dirt. Let me find the bullet and I'll get back with you. All right, we're back. I found that 308 round. Same thing as all the high caliber rifles, just shredded it. The jacket stopped, the lead moved a little bit further, and that's about it. So next up, we're gonna shoot is a 300 Ultramag. This is one of my favorite, least favorite guns to shoot. There's that massive bullet. Let me compare it to, let's say, 7.62. This is a huge slug still. And then there's the 300 Ultramag comparison. It's just ridiculous in size. Let me load this up, we'll take the shot. Don't make fun of me if I miss, because this rifle is definitely not sighted in. Okay, here we go. Raining sand down on me. This is the rifle, my 300 Ultra Mag. About a 9,000 foot barrel on it. It's a Remington 700. So let me go see if I can find that slug and uh, I'll show you what it looks like if I can. All right, I found the 300 Ultra Mag ground. It completely turned itself inside out. Didn't separate as much as the other ones, but it still separated a lot from the jacketing to the from the uh, lead. I it only went what was it eight inches into the sand before it stopped but it pushed so much sand out of there. I'm surprised I figured that would have went 10, 12 inches before it stopped. So next up, we're gonna shoot a 12 gauge at it, slug and buckshot and see what happens. So let me load that up and we'll get started. All right, here's our shotgun. It's a Mossberg 500. We're gonna be shooting a nine pellet devil op first. Massive hole as we'd expect. Let me go see if I can find any of the pellets. I'll be right back. All right, guys, we found seven of the pellets. Some of them just completely flattened out. That lead just shredded itself. Looks like I don't really know what happened. But you guys do let me know in the comments below, but I can't tell if two pellets collided in the sand with each other to become one, or if it just stretched that lead out. Some of the other ones are, nope, oh, there goes that one. Some of the other ones are almost good looking still but then you turn it around and the back is completely gone so next up let's shoot the 12 gauge slug and see what happens all right here we go just 
dumped all the dirt out as we'd expect. Let me go find it real quick. All right, guys. So I found the slug and I also found the wad, which was interesting. This wad by itself, this little piece of plastic, went four inches into the sand by itself before it stopped. The slug only carried on two more inches to six inches. But look how huge that thing got. It flattened out a ridiculous amount. So I'm gonna clean up the range and I'll get back to you. All right, y'all, so there you have it. If you're getting shot at, find eight inches or more of sand, you should be fine. So thank you for watching, slightly less tactical. I'm gonna get out of here because it's cold as ice. But I'm not willing to sacrifice our love. Oh no. But I'm willing to leave because it really is cold. Y'all have a good one, I'll see you next week on Slightly Less Tactical.